Uh, no more. Vampires. So vampires have taken over the castle again. My, my scouts, they, they took them. I was the only one who escaped. How many? I rode with eight subordinates, Majesty. I saw one killed right before me, and the others will be too. That cannot happen, Loren. Yes, we will travel there as soon as possible. Save the scouts. You're relieved, Brezza. Go home and rest. We will retrieve our Amazons. The military commander nodded and left. Loren knew she should have intervened sooner. Okay. So we have three quests. We've got branch trees, succubus, forest, uh, some sort of monster guy, and castle of Namar. Castle of Namar. Do you want to go camp first? Uh, yeah, let, let's, uh... We started chapter three? Yeah, we just started chapter three. Chapter three. Um, let us review our lovely list of comrades before he gets involved. Jesus. <clears throat> Game is super loud. Oh, yeah. I split did not retain the settings that I adjusted. That's project it. Thank you. Thanks, TJ. Saren patrolled outside of the camp alongside Draco for guard duty. He held a torch while Draco trained a ball of fire to illuminate his way. Oh, Saren holds a torch, doesn't he? Well, you know. They'd been conversing for a while before Saren realized something. Draco was showing up for his guard shifts even after Apollo Michaud's punishment week was over. Apollo Michaud's punishment week um, is my uh, elderly wizard's workout class. Mm, like, yeah, like solid boot camp kind of. <laughs> this is weird. I thought it was my turn to guard the camp. Did I make a mistake? Oh no, you're right. I set my turn for a year for a while. Did you want me to leave? Sarah kept his eyes on Draco as he started walking again. I didn't say that. Draco chuckled and joined his side like before. Well, all the exercise I can get from all the food I eat. I should. You know, I shouldn't like harm as much as I do. It's not natural. Sarah tried not to laugh, so he just hummed in agreement. That isn't interesting, right? Like, like... I would... I would... Here, I'll turn it down a bit more. It's really loud. Um... I would... Like, I understand what they're going for, like the mm-hmm, but... I would never characterize that as humming in agreement. Yeah, no. It's... I've gotten used to you being here. It's nice having someone around out here in these dark woods. It can get lonely. I know what you mean. Well, he said it caused Saren to think about loneliness outside of just the present. He thought of the early days when he would curl up on a bedroll in a slave pen next to hundreds of other men. Jesus. That's... Yeah, that's... Draco's remarks sent Saren into, like, a powerful traumatic episode. <laughs> Yet he was not allowed to speak to them, let alone know their names. None of the slaves could even manage to look another in the eyes while trying to keep warm by the soul fire. Wait, it's... Whoa! Jeez! <laughs> Sorry! We, we just... They haven't really detailed slave the slavery that, uh, uh, Saren suffered in great detail. Like... It was clearly saying it's slavery, but he seemed to have a, like, reasonable life around that. And now we find out that, no, that is not at all the case. No, he lived in pens with hundreds of men, suffering in the cold, unallowed to get, engage in any kind of social contact. Even around so many people, he was still... alone. It, it does explain why he's so deeply socially inept. Yes! Saren hadn't realized that his pace had slowed to a stop. Draco was now looking at him with concern. Sorry, I was just... thinking. The past is over with, you know. There's now, and there's the future. Anything can happen, so there's that. You're too optimistic, but that's... how I prefer you. I just noticed that the star on Draco's amulet is not a pentagram, it's a Star of David. Hmm, yeah. So, 
So where do you see yourself after this war is over? I ask as an interview question. <laughs> yeah. yeah <that's laughs> welcome to welcome to Saren's evening panel show. Uh, I'm your host, Saren. Joining us tonight is um, Draco, um, Amukiki, and uh, Dora. And our musical guest is Apollo Show's Punishment Hour. After the war's over, the world will be a better place everywhere. More accepting and inviting. I could actually go into a city and do stuff. As opposed to before when he was doing that before he met us. You mean without hiding your lineage? Draco's head tilted at the reference to his ears as if he could suddenly feel them. As if normally he couldn't feel them. <laughs> but ugly anyway. Probably still do that. Sarah frowned. No, I got it. And what about you? Oh, well, I'm an indentured slave. Uh, I... I'm a literal, actual slave. Man. I've always enjoyed good wine. The smell of it as I serve it to my mistress as though it will murder me at the drop of a hat or any slight against them. Uh, or for the mere crime of knowing another man's name. <laughs> I'd like to learn how to make wine. Oh, what about running a pub? You could drink, make, and sell wine for a living. I've never thought of that. That's actually an interesting idea. So I don't understand the concept of business. Silly, but interesting. I don't think you could do it. I think you could. Definitely. So let me come visit you sometime. Sample the wares. And get you drunk? No thanks. One drunk Draco is enough to last me a long, a long time. They laughed, bumping shoulders. All right, you two lovebirds. Who is this? Ah, <laughs> they stopped cold and turned to see Ramus. It's time for my shift, so go get some goddamn sleep, will you? Draco laughed under his breath and squeezed at the seams of his robes. Saren's cheeks burned. Lovebirds? Had they been acting like a couple? But... You hear me? I'm here to relieve you. Right. Be safe. Well, shit. You too, you too. <laughs> Passed the torch to the dwarf and started walking back to the camp, and Ramus is like, I got dark vision, you asshole! In his mind, he told himself that it was just a joke. Near his tent, he turned to Draco, who was also eerily quiet. But the mage put on a smile for him. Saren contemplating asking Draco not to show up for his guard shifts anymore. But then immediately tossed away the idea. Good night. Talk to you tomorrow. He started to move away, but Draco said his name. Hmm? I just remembered something else uh, about the future that I'd want. <coughs> Saren's throat went dry. I'd want a good friend to be there with me because I just wonder what it would be like to, you know, have friends. I, I just, this is where I. Saren almost thought he'd said those words instead of Draco. You probably will. <clears throat> a beat passed, and then Draco exhaled with a smile. Oh, good, that's a uh, relief. Um, I... They finally parted for the night, each more hopeful toward the future that they had been, seen, the day before. Oh, we maxed those hearts! Woo! That is, that is as affectionate as we can get. That is the best we can do. Uh, I, ma I bet that there's a final scene. Yeah. You, you after you've you maxed Choose hearts. somebody once you've maxed hearts. I, I, I don't know that it'll involve choosing somebody, but... Um, I do really super... Like, like, like the, the, the weird, weird, awkward romance pieces aside, I really dig that conversation for the, like... We're engaged in this weird quest behavior, but life exists outside of this, and what are we going to do after? Yeah. No. And, like... like we're we're not going to live in this camp for the rest of our lives. Yeah, we're we're not adventurers is not our career. We're we are hopeful that this will not continue indefinitely. All right. Speaking of career adventures, why don't we start on the left? All right. What you doing? Why? Are you gonna be busy between now and the Battle of Ever in Everbone? Getting that character quest. I have my duties. What are you asking? Well, there was this thing that I wanted to do, and I knew you were the right man to ask. What what thing? Why me? Are you flirting? Is this, is flirting? It, is this flirting? 
Shh, don't be so obvious. It's flirting. It's, oh, God. Oh, it is. Sorry, why not? No, it's just, I don't want nobody to hear us. When I left Grimoire to follow your princess, I left all my stuff behind. It's been stolen, and now I want to get it back. Didn't you technically steal all that stuff? Wasn't it's going, it, like, it will be, have been these stolen. Are, these are separate clauses. It was stolen, <laughs> and I want it. Who, who stole it? Those damn city... Knew it. Yeah. <laughs> they ransacked my whole hideout. I mean, home. I mean, Dora Cave. There's only one thing I really want anyway. If you promise to help me get it, I'll split it with you. Is it food? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> don't be silly. Now don't tell nobody or deal's off. Dora looks over her shoulder and dashes away. And Saren's just like, I hope it's food. <laughs> We've acquired a personal quest. Hooray! Awesome. <clears throat> uh, we'll talk to Draco, see if Draco's got anything to say. Hey! Saren sighed, but at the same time, drop what he was doing to give Draco his full attention. You never really told me more about you. I think you should. Like what? Like tell me about your family. If you had any lovers. Lovers? Don't you think that's a bit personal? I caught your fire out of my goddamn bloody being! Hey, I, I guess I don't have any right to know one. Why ask then? I'm just curious. Why curious about you? What makes you tick? What makes Salmon so totally awesome? So you idolize me? I mean, I wouldn't call it an idol, but it's, it's, it's a bit of a graven image, yes. <laughs> I certainly don't have a little shrine dedicated to you inside my tent, if that's what you're getting at. <laughs> it's not little. Since we're to be traveling together, it's fair that you should know something about where I came from. And then you can tell me something about you in return. Oh, uh, that, that, that sounds fair. We're having a normal human conversation <laughs> here. Yes, we're not space aliens. <laughs> Look. Saren proceeded to tell Draco about how he's a slave to the Amazons inside the Citadel, about how he worked at a healer's clinic for most of his life, and how he was born from an Amazon mother and an Empire soldier. I'm pretty sure dude knows all this stuff. Uh, yeah. Oh. Well, maybe not the details. You're like me. Pardon? I'm half and half, like you. Like the queen. Saren had never considered himself a hybrid, since he was so readily dismissed from being an Amazon. But it was true, he was born as half Amazon, if men could be such. I mean, I was drawn to you for a reason. So was your mother a elf for a human? That's the start of a joke, isn't it? She was an elf. My father was a merchant from Lothark. He traveled to the forest a lot. They met. You know how it goes. Saren could detect that the story did not end there as Draco's eyes drifted away and his carefree demeanor disappeared. Their love was not accepted, was it? An elf for the human. You can't get more star-crossed than that. Still, my new folks know what they would face. They fell in love anyway. Had me. Ha! Draco tried to chuckle, but it was too serious a subject for Saren. You said your earliest memories were being an orphan in a magic academy. What happened to your parents? He finally frowned. He tried to pretend they were a real family. I lived in Lothark until I found out my mum was an elf and locked her up and took me away from my dad. At least that's what I've been told. I found out on my own. I know what you're thinking. They're out there somewhere and I should find them. I'm leagues ahead of you on that. Turns out they're dead. Whoa! <laughs> he said it so casually it made Saren reach out to grasp Draco by the shoulder. The sudden touch sparked a new emotion in Draco's eyes. Dude, this is not the time for that. Well, uh, His heart wrenched. I know when you smile, you're hiding your pain. Are you sure you're not a space alien? But like, Batman. He bashfully looked side to side. I don't have a clue what you mean. Draco. I think we've no. learned enough about each other <laughs> for now. What would you think? I think. That's what we need to do. We need to... We... Okay. <laughs> now, sure. now we're in six sure, sure thing, game. Great. <laughs> um, I think uh, we need to... Get Loren to present Saren with a sock. Uh, yeah, yes. All right. Um, you mentioned the old war. Allow me to guess you do not know of it. No, sir. 
It was a military campaign, similar to the one we are forging now. When I was a younger man, when, when I was a young man, <laughs> little, 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 there was not much tension between the Empire and their elves as there is now. We were able to come together more easily, which is why I am sure Faust is trying to keep us at war with each other. In his interest that we are divided! I was not the Arch Wizard at the time. Nor, nor am I now, technically. Nor was I one of the few that battled. We lost many wizards in the old war. It was a tough battle. Technically, I feel like this is the old war. Um, in that all the people fighting in it are old. All of the people from the first war. Mm. Something <clears throat> that covers his midriff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You need to. Loren needs to present Saren with a cummerbund, <laughs> or like a cravat. I cannot begin to describe its difficulty or the cost that had to be paid to win it. Oh, he's got a little sad wizard face. Yeah, they did a really good job with like the sad eyes in this. <laughs> you make it sound like this war on Everburn will be impossible. Well, they don't call it sometime burn. Do they, kid? We know more about warfare now, and most importantly, we know a lot more about Foster Lager. In the old war, Foster Lager was a much stronger foe, so he is making up for his lack of power with allies. We must crush all that support him. That is our best chance, and I've just sort of undermined the difficulty of this, that we sort of beat a tougher war a while ago. Um, with less resources and without a chosen one. Yeah, so really, of... what's taking you so long? And Ashtray, you said you knew him from the war? Yes, he and Tobey are old chums of mine. Ash was naive, and it is thanks to Tobey that he is alive today. Friendship was about the only thing that got us through the war. It kept us in our minds and gave us hope for the future. Yes, the real war was the friends we made along the way. Actually, Wait. It, the, the, really what I'm saying is that was a much better game than this one. Yes, it's, yes. Um, the whole story was better and more compelling. The main character wasn't an asshole princess and a slave. We were sort of equals, but at odds. It was very compelling. Brothers! Brothers, one might say! A fellowship, if you will. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm legally forbidden from using the term fellowship. But we did toss that very small bracelet into the active... Lava the geyser. The Everburn, yes. The Everburn Lava Geyser. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. It doesn't seem like you stayed in contact with Bitch, them. Bitch, I ghosted them! <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> as soon as the war was over, I stopped returning their emails. <laughs> Times changed. We were moved to different parts of the world. Events occurred. <laughs> Events occurred. I'm gonna use that the next the next time I'm like I, I I'm like on a date and I'm not gonna go for a second one. I'm just gonna be like, let's be let's be honest here. Events have occurred. That's fucking terrible. Sometimes that is how it must be. <laughs> Jesus, you're a terrible friend. It doesn't have to. Perhaps not. Good, have, good, good talk, buddy. Yeah, have you, but honestly, have you met Samuel? He's a shit. No, not Samuel. Samuel's not buddies with him at all. Ashtray, Ashtray, oh. and Tobey are. All right, who yeah. are actually cool. Fair point. All right, Amukiki, the bear. It was uncomfortable for Saren to see Amukiki fall so easily under his empire's prejudice against elves. Even though he wasn't one himself, he had close elven friends back at the Citadel. <clears throat> Slaves. Yeah. It was important to him that Amukiki wasn't so quick to judge. I can tell what you're thinking. 
It's in your eyes, you, so you might as well just tell me. That's a great way to open a conversation with someone that you, you're on sort of, like, bad terms with. Yeah, no. Uh, I, I do not blame uh, Emukiki for being slightly rude to Serenade, which is the worst he's ever been. Really. Right? Yeah. Like, like he's been, like, moderately dismissive. Uh, and I think that's fair. What? About the elves. About the war. About how terrible they are. The assumption hit too close for Emukiki's bride. I'm not as harsh on the elves as you seem to think. I'm not from the Empire, so I wasn't raised to hate them. But they declared war on my home. They didn't. It was the demons. Listen, motherfucker. I'm sure that it's the elves on the battlefield now, not demons. Well, yep, that, this is clearly where this conversation is going. Yep. How can you think that way? Literally, there's elves uh, on the battlefield. Yeah, yeah, so yes. the, the demons don't have crossbows. You're a greater man than that. I know you are. The... No, n- Emukiki was silent for a long moment. He almost seemed flustered. <laughs> As if this isn't how humans converse. <laughs> Are you a space alien? I apologize. I have made too many judgments. You you are right. Saren was a bit stunned from his sudden change of heart because Emukiki was actually sincere. Emukiki he, has always he been has nothing always, but sincere. Yeah, like he is fundamentally honest. He just doesn't like you. <laughs> he has been a honest well earned, about that. Yes, a well-earned position, I might add. You really mean that? I do not say what I don't mean, but this is a complicated matter. It doesn't have to be. They looked at each other until Emukiki broke his gaze. I do not give myself honor in this way. It is not my role to make such judgments. You bring yourself honor instead by revealing this to me. But, but, what? I'm just, like, off screen, um, I'm guessing that Saren has just, like, pried a stove in his chest plate and is like... I assume so? And is like, yeah, like, you bring yourself a great deal of honor by revealing yourself to me. Saren's lips twitched. Thank you. And Wakiki nodded and left to think on his own. Yeah, sure, that's that's how that works. Yeah, no, every step of our romance uh, with this guy has been... Like, natural and genuine, and... <laughs> Alright, Remus. <clears throat> hey, you man! Are you talking to me? D- I said, hey, human! Yes, I'm talking to you! Now, oh, fine, go on, forget it. No, no, what, what did you want? Oh, those sad, the sad Remus eyes. Oh, man. I said you'd go on, you're not the right person with this anyhow. For what? I, now I'm interested. I just had a personal <clears throat> problem is all. Dora? No, no, hell, it's it's family stuff. Oh, what's the problem? Listen, y'all, it's fucking chapter three, and we ain't done my goddamn personal quest yet. I'm important. I'm a member of this party. I, I understand that I'm not allowed to be in the party anymore, nor am I allowed to be in the back row, nor am I allowed to be in the party in the back row next to Dora, but none of that is the point here. My goddamn brother, Weasel who I assume is his name, is running my family into the ground. Although, that would normally be a good thing on account of we're dwarves, but here, I, I mean it as a bad... L- listen, my culture is rich and complicated. Shut up! Since he's technically my elder, he's the head of it all, but he's got much for a mind, I tell you, and a coin to our goddamn name no more. It's about time I take the family stones away from him. By that, I mean nuts. You, you're planning on castrating. What? Ain't you heard of the goddamn family gems and the pride of dwarven houses? Head dwarf maintains a family gem to keep a record of our accomplishments. Yeah, what I'm saying is I need to repossess the family jewels if you catch my drift. I need to repossess my brother's family jewels. I've never heard of that. How do you keep records on a testicle? All kinds of ways. It's like those family crests some people have. Symbols and such. 
Because of marriage, sometimes a family's got a lot of jewels, if you know what I mean. I fear that I do. Bastard Kydris has slid his slimy hands on all of them. He don't care how he's tarnishing them. Jesus Christ. Time for me to be head dwarf. You don't, don't you think? All right. Let's go talk to your brother. Yeah. All right. That personal quest. Uh, we do learn last. So, yep, yeah, so yeah. Now we start to with Souser. Souser. Shaw. You had said that many monks in your temple were trying to repent for past sins. Shaw. Serves the disciples well. And what about you? Oh. Uh, I mean, have you done anything sinful? Souser pressed his lips into a thin line and then sighed. Once I, like, had this friend, and Ryu, you caught me, dude. I, yeah, I'm like the poster boy for repenting monks. I mean, like, I'm not the only one, but it's true. I, I, I use my... I, I use my powers for personal gain and like there was like a s league of fighters that fought in the streets for money mm. I flew like all over the world but I failed to confront uh, uh, M. Bison I'm ashamed of a great sin and I sought Irijo to clear my mind and like ease my burdens and stuff she's given me the honorable title of master of truth but I still do not feel that my sin is washed away. You still do not feel atoned? Uh, no, dude. A atoned isn't like how we use that word. Uh, you speak like a space alien. I apologize, <laughs> fellow flesh being. I, I don't want to. I don't want to say what I did though. Like later, also <clears throat> later. Oh God. <laughs> One day we're going to have a conversation between um, a poll of the show and this dick, and we're just going to, like, we're just going to, we will be kicked off of Twitch. We're going to do it right before a break so we can just go and drink all the water in my house. Did you really kill a forest elder? Misfit stood up straight. I did. How could you? Were you under the influence of your demon blood again? No. The Elder deserved his death. I acted for my people, not for the demon inside. You... I don't regret my actions. They were wrong, and they were violent, so you'd think they're like, I would. But I regret nothing. You murdered someone, but don't regret it? Why not? All the pleas of my people were ignored by the forest. My father tried in vain to reach out to the elders and the druids. We're killed on sight in the forest, and the messengers we pay to enter on our behalf might as well have never gone. Not a word ever comes back. Also, we don't have cable. Or email. My father tried to email that wizard so many times ever since the war. Neither me they didn't send food or help. We were left to fend with for ourselves in the arid sand, just as they condemned our ancestors. The elders forced our hands. That elder forced me to kill him. How can you think that way? You murdered him. We're what? actually, like, despite the funny voices, we're actually like having a conversation about the nature of violent reaction to systemic oppression, so maybe you should just fucking listen instead of just repeating the same thing. I don't expect you to understand. Joking! No, this is this is literally it too. It's right. It's like, well, as soon as you start being violent, you've lost the moral high ground. <laughs> Look, all I know is that if you start stabbing people, they hate you pretty quickly. The thing you don't get is that they hated us first. Your stabbing and stealing and everything else—that's bad. 
And you expect people to change their minds about you? <laughs> ah, we're joking. <laughs> we're just, oh, oh. I'm the beginning. I'm the next step. I'm the shadow. The flaps in the night. Elves are a cowardly and superstitious lot. My father and the whole reign of fathers before him. That doesn't mean anything. They tried the peaceful approach. They all failed. I won't fail. Now we fight back. They put us in this position. So it's their faults. All of their faults. The deaths I've watched from their selfishness. Nesvik closed his eyes and tightly and turned away. Oh my god, I get it! It's so good! Oh, these guys that kill me are so funny when they're oh, joking. Oh my god. <laughs> Saren jokes like a space alien. <laughs> yeah, actually, like... The, the, the interesting thing about that, like, like there, there's a, there's, like, just funny voices aside, there's a bunch of, like, legitimate dialogue that's happening in there. But none of it's a joke! No! But none of that is a joke. Like... It's like... Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's like, Saren, Saren just, like, completely sidesteps the notion that like the elves did some very like are in the in the process of ostracizing the dark elves to the point where they're dying and he's like but wouldn't you agree that killing is bad <laughs> all right ready for some uh <laughs> A woman trying to get you woke through harassment? <laughs> Hello, Kambara. Would you be willing to answer some of my questions about you? Kambara giggled. That sounds fucking ominous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about time we got to know each other better. It's important you watch my eyebrows. How did you come to be in the swamps? Can make you come in swamps as well. <laughs> you were being serious. Uh, oh, uh, Stoughton, that's, uh, or, or Sean, the chat. Hello, chat. Um, uh, starch. <laughs> Lots of starch. That collar? No, it's a choker. Yeah. Like, it's a, yeah, but the triangles are staying up via oh, starch. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The, totally. the late, yeah. I mean, you can also wire it at the top, right? Like, yeah, but no, lace collars have a long tradition of being starched to ooh, good point. Yeah, immobility. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course I am. I don't remember what we're talking about. She's also the only character with a tattoo. Hmm. Well, she is evil. Oh, yeah. No, that's true. That's true. And I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Draco uh, has like a, like a lower back tattoo that he somewhat regrets. Oh, it could be a bitching neck, ta neck tattoo. I, uh... Although, I, no, I would love to think that Draco has a tattoo of, like, a huge <laughs> fireball that covers his entire back. Mm, yeah. It's private information. She crossed her arms and looks away. What do you do all day in the swamps? Could rearrange that sentence. It would be very important. Don't you ever feel lonely? Kamara's hard look broke at the insinuation. Instead of being angry, the Dark Witch forced a laugh. You think I am alone in that hut? Hardly. So many demons. Demons and frogs. Frogs that used to be people. No, gods, no. No, I don't, I don't want to know. The curiosity is not killing me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Who is so depraved that they seek you out in the unforgiving swamps? Yeah, that's friendly. Yeah. What? That's, that's, that's how you make friends. Yeah. No. Yay, friends. You just, you just like, immediately neg them. Yeah. On your fifth conversation. Depraved, darling. What I have to offer would make kings bow at my feet. Maybe one day when you're waiting to this swamp, you'll understand exactly the kind of power I have over people like you. Ooh. Ray crossed his arms and gave Saren a stone-cold glare. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm not blind. I see what you're doing. What are you talking about? 
Merth. Uh, n- 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 not, not yet. Sarah intensed. Ray hadn't been very receptive of him from the very beginning. Now that he was enjoying his sister's company, he was likely not pleased. You're wasting your time with her, and you should give her up. We should totally joke with him. Knock, knock, Brian. <laughs> uh, okay, who's there? Um, Ifa. Ifa who? I fucked your sister. <laughs> uh, oh, and, and Chad, it's not that his eyebrows are in front of his hair. It's that his hair is, in fact, transparent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's, that's like a standard anime thing. Yeah. It's, uh... I bet you'd love that. My knock-knock joke is already better than whatever this is. Too bad I like her and she likes me. No, she... He stopped himself and tried again. She likes you, but that's it. That's all it can be. Why are you jealous? Why? Are you jealous or something? I don't want to see Merth get hurt. And that's the road you're playing at. Uh, no, no. And, and Sean, his, his elves are clearly behind um, his hair. It doesn't have to make sense. It's anime. That's not really for you to say, is it? Don't fall in love with her. I'm warning you. I'm literally an assassin. <laughs> I, will, I will literally kill you. You will not see it coming. I feel like there's that conversation where it's like, I'll kill your whole family. It's like, joke's on you. I don't have a family because they're dead and I don't know anyone's name uh, because I wasn't permitted to know them in slavery. And Ray's like, oh, dude, that's that's horrible. Ray was curt and he meant every word. He left telling Saren there was no room for debate. But there was no way Saren was just going to accept that. And so instead we're going to go chill with his sister. <clears throat> You're called the Elder Druid. What does that mean? You don't have a grasp of the obvious. The elves are governed by a group of elders, but the forest is governed by the Elder Druid. That's a bit confusing. I'm sorry. And this is the elves inhabit the forest. We coexist. It's been this way since the forest was just a wee sapling. There are other druids in the forest, but I'm the Elder because of my, my mother was before me. That's like tree feudalism. Do you hold any powers over the elves? I wouldn't have say so, but they better fucking listen careful when I speak of matters to the forest. They don't take more than they need and the forest abides them. That's very symbiotic. Oh, uh, chat, the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, the answer is... Yeah, yeah, we don't know. Is she wearing ivy? Is it growing out of her? Probably both. <laughs> Probably both. She's a druid. Your Highness, you may speak freely. In the audience chamber, you had said that you considered the humans and the elves stupid. Do you really think that? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. yes. Karen's face dropped in disbelief. Uh, I said that? Sarah nodded. That does sound unforgivable. Sure. I am used to little outside the Citadel, given that earlier in the narrative it was fairly clear that if either myself or any of my offspring left, we, uh... Immediately disinherited. Immediately disinherited, yeah, and abdicated, uh, and that said we'd abdicated the throne. Uh, I adapt well, but there are some delicacies of speech that I have not learned, as I am used to speaking out to Amazons only as the leader of the nation. But you are correct. Now that all the cultures must come together, I cannot speak so disparagingly about other cultures. This is she's like the Prince Philip of Amazons. <laughs> it's like it's Yes! Like it. Elves are great. I mean, great at being slaves. Like, that's really sort of what I was getting at. Oh, excuse me? Oh, no, I didn't mean it like that. Yeah, yeah, it's... It, it, this is, like, it very much the... Oh, 
I am not allowed to be publicly racist anymore, so I'd better watch what I say. Yeah. Not, <laughs> especially the race of men. You have shown me that your people are good people. You do them a great honor. You are one of the good ones, Saren. No, it is you who honors me with such words. Look at you using those those words. Karen smiled. Karen smiled warmly. All right. Last but not least, but actually least. Actually least, yeah. But after that, I think I no no. I still think like Loren and uh, her mom, Karen, <clears throat> not. They're both terrible. Oh, yeah. Karen was less terrible. She's getting more terrible as we get to know her. Mm -hmm. It's less about her trauma story and more about her, like, terrible leadership. Powerful sense of entitlement. (laughs) Why are Amazon princesses not allowed to leave the Citadel? Well, very scenario that happened. If the queen is killed in battle, her kin can immediately take her place. Except my mother did not have such a noble demise. She simply disappeared and they attempted to crown me. And you couldn't stand for it? You were literally there. It was chapter one of this game. Of course not. A strong Amazon can only die in one of two ways. By someone's blade, or by their own. Or I mean fireballs. Falling in a chasm. Many forms of disease. Crossbows. Yes, disease. Uh, old age. Yeah. Yes, heart disease is fairly... Oh, eat God. a lot of rich food. Oh, is really, so yes. much butter. Saren's eyes went wide, though he had heard of a few ritual suicides in his lifetime. We're talking about ritual suicide. I think we should make a joke. (laughs) Neither of those sound fun. They are honorable. Honor is not supposed to be fun. They embody absolutely everything it means to be born a Klingon. I mean an Amazon. I mean a Klingon. What did I say? Who's directing this? But how is killing yourself a strong thing? Isn't that just escaping life? Listen up. It's it's conquering both pain and death. You should ask whatever deity you worship to be so lucky. that One day, you should get to die honorably on your own blade, rather than me cutting your head off for impertinence. Alright, so let's take a look at our quests. So those are available character quests, but uh, we're going to go talk to some vampires, right? Yeah, vampires. All right. Hopefully they're not just going to kill us real bad. The castle by the sea that had once looked abandoned now looked like it had been lived in for ages. Windows were alight, the grounds were well kept, and the architecture had been repaired. Good good job, vampire contractors. Yeah, Uh The infamous castle of Numba has been reoccupied! I don't understand. There ain't supposed to be any lords in there. Why not? It's a perfectly serviceable castle. The people of this land were once massacred and, in their death, their bitterness cursed this land. Sure. No crops will grow except all this grass. No good animal will tread it. And caravans that pass through are never seen again. Every attempt to live in the castle has ended with the old, with, with the old, untimely, sorry, with the untimely death of the inhabitants. Yes, haunted. It's played with vampires. This isn't the first time the Amazons have had to get rid of them. The souls of the murdered continue to find no rest. Yes, yes, I understand. You want to have a primetime television show. May peace finally come to those who lost their lives here. You're already at peace. We're just being part of the crusher now. That's all right. They have our Amazon sisters. They closed in on the sinister castle. The sky darkened and the wind stopped. I don't like it here. Falling dust pulled their attention to the top of an archway. High above them they saw winged grotesques crackling to life as if they hadn't moved in hundreds of years. Props for grotesques instead of gargoyles. That's interesting. <laughs> like, his gargoyles have water that passes through. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and grotesques, grotesques are just the statues. Yeah, 
But in any other fantasy context, you would just refer to them as gargoyles because that's what everyone knows them as. I 100% the person who wrote this, super proud of that knowledge. Mm, probably. Oh, and Apollo Michelle. Gargoyles protecting the castle from intruders. Prepare yourselves! Why, shit, then I know. More protectors of the castle emerged. This time it was a pack of inferno hounds. Their growls weren't warnings, but signals of their attacks. Uh, watch out. The hounds and the gargoyles descended upon the group almost at the same time. Alright, so what's our party setup right now? Looks solid. Uh, yep, yep. I mean, maybe Kambara will get traded out because they're... Oh yeah, because all this stuff's probably resistant to dark magic. Do we probably, wanna, but do we then we gotta bring a poem to show and I think. Um, Fair? But... Like, she's also got non-dark stuff. Yeah, now. she does have non-dark stuff. She's cool. Right. Paul Michaud has all that uh, don't go anymore stuff. All right, so... Here we go. Yeah, resist dark. Resist dark, resist fire, critically weak to water. Okay, well, they're going to die then. Frozen. These guys are weak to air. I don't think we got much of that. And resistant to normal attacks. Okay. All right, so Saren, just open up. Jesus! Okay, now we get to do things. Uh, let's buff. Uh, yeah, that seems like a great... Oh, Kambara's dead. Yeah, I know. That's I, did, I did not see that. Uh, let's entangle. Is that air? Uh, this is earth, but it, try it slows. Okay, slow seems good. Slow, 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 slow. Nice. Nice. Um, so these guys are resistant to fire, but water does quite well. So we can try and take out the front row, or we can just nail everybody. Um, let's drop the... Well, how much better is the front... It, it, oh, it's substantially better if we... Um, yeah. <clears throat> but with this, um, it'll... We can oh, oh, the, the back front. row is The back row is almost dead. Okay, yeah. yeah. Yes, do that. And then notice how much weaker the back row is. Yeah, and then when was. Saren's turn comes up... Uh, right. Block, block. Yeah, we're going to block. No, shield wall, down. Right. Uh, Saren. You come back to Prince life. Kamara. Uh, Loren. Kill everyone. Uh, guy on the right has the fewest hit points. She could just straight kill the guy with the most hit points. Oh, oh, she can hurt things now, right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. She's actually good. Um, he's not. That's fine. You're doing the job of... Oof. Jeez. Okay, yeah. You kill someone else. That seems great. Uh, Hellhound C goes next. So we can kill him so he can't go yeah. next? Yeah, that seems great. What? Oh, she's stunned. She's paralyzed? She's paralyzed. She's paralyzed. Uh, oh, our whole front row is paralyzed. They're not a whole front row, but uh, Sarah's also paralyzed. So Kamara goes Kamara's down, down again. again. He is... Burning. Yeah, but you can kill that guy. That is good. Um, Saren. Yeah, bring her back Actually, up. Actually, let's just heal. Oh, he can't. He's paralyzed. Still. Right. All he can do is defend. Well, he can uh, potion. Or he can potion. So why don't we potion Amukiki? That does not very much, but okay. Um, and this will kill all of the back row and hopefully slow the guy in the front. Okay. Okay, and now we're fine. Can we just stick him? No. We can just him. Yeah. Ooh. I don't like you. Ooh. We are maybe a little under level for this. The gargoyle has crumbled into lifeless rubble. Lorenz swiped her blade masterfully at the final hound in her way. Why won't you die? The hound was still standing its ground against all odds. I know those eyes. That beast is fighting for someone besides itself. What? 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 Karen had to close her eyes suddenly to keep from seeing Lorenz's blade make this final strike. Well, it's dead now. Some looked down at the hound as if they regretted that it had to die after fighting so valiantly. Others, such as Loren, thought nothing of it. But in the silence, they all heard the whimpering of a hound. They froze and turned back around. 
An inferno hound they had all thought long dead whimpered louder and stood up. It clawed its way over to the resisting hound that Loren had just skewered. It was almost impossible to not be moved about how the beast sniffed and whimpered over the dead hound's body, as if it was capable of feelings like them, which is super weird. Um, like, like we can acknowledge broadly that, like, dogs experience feelings. Mm, mm-hmm. Um. But, you know, maybe that's new, well, demon fire yeah, hound like, right, monsters like, being like, oh, you, okay, so you have, you're like a normal dog, despite your terrifying countenance. The morning hound then howled loudly up into the sky, the voices of each of its heads creating a piercing symphony. That poor thing! Did we kill it, sweetie? No, it is a juvenile! I got your back. You're, gonna, you're drinking. <laughs> His parent. Karen stepped toward the hound, but Lorenz stopped her. Mother. Would you rather give it to the quick death it deserves? Kill it. After we come in here to kill its mummy, our apology is to kill it. Lorenz was tight-lipped as Draco stormed past Karen. Draco. The hound stopped howling and jumped back, growling at Draco. Dummy, come back here. Draco's literally made of fire. Yeah, yeah. I can snipe it from here, no worries. Your doggy, it won't hurt you. Be careful. Draco pulled out meat from the inside of his robes because he has a ham problem <laughs> and tossed it at the growling hound. It stopped and sniffed it suspiciously and then licked it once, twice. See? Oh, well, I'm done. I'm a nice one. The Inferno Hound ripped at the meat with all three of its head, sharing it equally among the ma- amongst the mouths. When it was done, it pounced on Draco. Everyone gasped. Saren ran up with his blade drawn, with Loren not far behind. They quickly realized that the Hound was not attracting Draco, however, only sniffing him for more food. Oh there! Not there! That tickles! What are you doing? Think of a new pet. An Inferno Hound. A pet. Why not? Because they'll eat you in your sleep? Ah, so it must fit. They are the demon's allies. The hound didn't attack or growl at anyone. His three sets of eyes were stuck on Draco. Ah, he's fine. I cannot find it in me to kill this hound's child. We should let it live. Fine, but we're not keeping it. It's no one's pet. Entertaining an inferno hound is only asking for trouble. My little turtle, aren't you? Aren't you? Ren crinkled her nose. Saren, you tell him to get rid of it. Keep the hound. Hundred percent. Trouble. Good. I like it. All right. So I assume strength. Uh, probably auto assign. Yes. Okay. All right. So what does it do? Fire breath. Hits a single target with for fire damage. Two hundred percent. So single target fire damage. Single target, fire damage, single target, lots of fire damage. So basically lots of fire damage. Hits two times, a single target, and... Has a chance of point. But it needs to be stunned, or stunned whatever. Staggered, yeah. Staggered. Um, gives it a super defense bonus. Yeah, big ass defense bonus. Pushes an enemy front row to the back row. Oh, that's, that's kind of pretty neat. sweet. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. there's no there's so, no chance on that either. I yeah, did. it's just yeah, it pushes them back and maybe makes them scared. Um, increases attack and speed by ten percent. Last three turns, 10, 20, 30 percent. That's not too bad. Yeah. So. So yeah, push two back, definitely. Yeah. Doesn't do I, any damage. I though. I don't think we need the you know, the the thing I like about it is that it puts casters in the front row. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't do any I don't damage. think we need any more points in that. Yeah, what, what's the about... other tree that it's got? Is it the warrior tree? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think we need any of that either. Okay, so... Um, the double attack, maybe? Attacks twice. Oh, but they need to be staggered. They need to be staggered. Yeah, they need to be staggered. Which, we're not that good at making things. Fire breath, whatever... Yeah, like single target fire breath. Nah. We've got like anything that's vulnerable to fire is already dead. Yeah. Um. Or maybe are, are there any warrior ones that are worth it? Uh. 
Mm, power attack, whatever. Um, no, because the his like this attacks his improves. Yeah, that's that's way better. Yeah, go faster and attack better. Um, which leads to push. Which needs to be staggered. We might as well take the double attack. Well, we already pushed a guy to the back row. Yeah, taunt. Taunt. No uh, passive resistance. So not really. So this guy. Now we can get all of those. Boom. Yes. Boom. Yes. You are very fast and attacky. Um. I, I mean, guess... we could just bump the other one to level two or level three, and increase the odds of people being scared. I guess. Well, um, we've only got one point left. Um. Yeah, it takes action. Time needed six. Like, this one's really quick, too. Yeah. It nice. makes them faster. Um, like, we're ever going to have them Oh, actually, the thing I like about the Fire Breath is that it's range all. Oh, so we can hit the he, back row. He, he's a front row attacker who can hit the back row. Okay, so there we go. We've got Fire Breath. Nice. Uh, Finished. Yeah. Finished. I have no problem with Drago keeping a pet. What? Wonderful! Another creature saved from the darkness! Achievement unlocked. Animalist. I do like your... Mirth approached the dog and petted its middle head. Its tail began to wag and the other heads pushed the middle out of the way, fighting for Mirth's attention. We don't need dead weight. If that mud's recognized Draco as his new owner, you won't have to worry about that. It'll fight alongside us! We're its new pack! <laughs> Kill it if it gets out of line. The same as you, Draco. Draco waited for Loren to leave to bend down a whisper to the hound. Don't worry, Turtle. She's all black. Draco led the hound inside the castle walls, and it obediently followed. Trouble became a loyal servant for Loren and her friends. It needed a pack to survive, and Draco was willing to adopt it. It was a wild beast that needed domestication in many aspects. It was still vastly more civilized than most members of the party. Its untamed spirit turned into a formidable ally on the battlefield. They approached the entrance to the castle and saw that it was covered in cobwebs and more dusty gargoyles. The tall windows, however, were lit as if the castle were lived in. And we should actually take a break. Yeah. So we're, we'll move toward the giant doors in like 10 minutes or so. Now that we have a dog. Yep. There's still many more characters to get. But there, we've got three more? I think so. I can't imagine who they would be. I do, we don't have room more room in our camp. No, 